Let's continue with some basic introduction to probability distribution functions. For a discrete random variable, okay, probability distribution is expressed is expressed by its probability mass function, lowercase p, lowercase x. P here uh, is the function itself. Usually it is a table or a graph or an equation, could be an equation. And x is just, just the input of the, of the function, okay? Remember here, lowercase p, lowercase x. x is for, um, if you are calculating a specific value, x is for that specific value, the input of the, of the formula. So there are three properties, uh, uppercase p, uppercase x equals x. It means that the probability that uppercase x equals lowercase x can be calculated as the output of function lowercase p, lower x. Lower x here is for the input of the function, of the probability mass function. It's usually a specific value. And uh, this value, the output of the function is always somewhere between zero and one because the probability cannot be negative, cannot be larger than one, okay? Probability can be addressed by the percentage, can be addressed by a decimal, but it's always between zero and 100% or between zero and 1.0. Okay, and if you add them up, you calculate the summation of Px is always equal to one. This is for discrete random variable. We have probability mass function Px. For continuous random variable, it's more complex. We use a function called probability density function instead of mass function to address uh, the probability of random, continuous random variable. So we call it PDF. It's not the extension for that uh, document, okay? It's not a format. It's, uh, it's, it's short for probability density function. Here we use a lowercase f to address PDF. And uh, for continuous random variable, a very special part is that you cannot calculate the probability of a continuous random variable at a specific value. You can only calculate the probability of a continuous random variable within a specific range. Okay, I'm going to talk more about this and explain this in, um, I think next feature, next lecture, um, uh, uh, we will have two lectures on probability. I think uh, that content will be in the lecture for uh, uh, the second part of probability lecture, okay? For now, you just need to know that, you just need to know that there is no specific value of probability for a continuous random variable at a specific point. Because of that, we can only calculate the P of a specific event or a, a, a specific random variable within a range. Let's just use A and B to address the lower boundary and uh, high, uh, a bottom boundary and uh, a top boundary or lower boundary and a higher boundary all of this range, okay? And uh, because it's continuous this time, we cannot use summation. We use calculus to address what? The probability of a continuous random variable within the range from A to B. Okay, but do not worry about the calculation. Um, you're not going to um, actually calculate calculus this semester, okay? And another feature here is that fx is always equal to or larger than zero. But this time, fx value, 
can be larger than one. You, you would ask why it's probability. It's not possible to be larger than one. Yes, you're right. But fx here is not probability. It's probability density. It's just like the density of water. Okay, so um, the mass of pure water for a cubic meter is one ton, right? So you can say that um, the mass density of water is one ton per cubic meter. That's the density of water. For a specific volume of, of water, you need to use this density to multiply the specific size of the water to get the actual weight of the water, right? It's similar here. PDF or FX value is only for probability density. You need to multiply something here specifically. You actually have to do calculus to actually get the probability. So for FX, it could be larger than one. It's very common to be larger than one. Okay, just remember, fx is not probability. It's probability density. Okay, so uh, 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 property three here. If you calculate the, um, the, the calculus from uh, a negative infinite to positive infinite, uh, eventually you will have a result of one. This is just, this he, uh, here is just uh, um, another version of this formula. Sigma of px equals one. Because here we only have discrete values. It's possible to just find out all those values and add them up. But this time we have infinite possible values. We cannot simply use summation to do that. We need to use another thought in mathematics, which is called calculus to address continuous space. Okay, so fx is often represented by a graph or an equation. You cannot use a table to address fx because if there is a table, there must be um, finite entries, but fx is continuous. There are infinite possibilities, so table cannot be used. Okay. Okay, more terms and I will just um, finish this lecture. So observation, the elements or phenomena under study for which information is obtained or assigned. For example, you want to survey uh, the commuting time of young people within a city and uh, you may do questionnaire. You can just go to uh, go to different blocks and just randomly interview people, right? Each questionnaire can be considered as an observation or each face-to-face -face, um, interview Q&A, that's an observation, okay? Then statistical population, the entire site of observations being studied. Okay, for example, um, <clears throat> say, uh, there is a big city of with 1 million people living in. So, the, uh, so you want to do a survey. It's not possible to just survey all 1 million people, right? You just want to do maybe 200 people randomly chosen uh, in the streets, right? So the statistical population of your um, experiment is 200 people. Okay, that's statistical population you interview 200 people, right? That's the population of the experiment. Then we have sample, a subset of the observations in a statistical population. So um, you interview 200 people, but uh, in your study, uh, maybe 200 is just, uh, again, uh, too much. Uh, you use a specific method to pick out some of um, the interviews in, from these 200 people, say, um, 50 individuals from your uh, experiment. That 50 people or 50 interviews or 50 questionnaires uh, you, you just did is a sample of your statistical population. Okay, so it's a subset of uh, statistical population. Then we have descriptive statistics. 
numerical or quantitative summary of the characteristics of a data set. It can be, uh, these statistics can be for sample, can be for population. Okay, and uh, for example, the average uh, commuting time of, of the people you interviewed, that's a descriptive statistics. And uh, what's the max value of the commuting time in your experiment? That's another descriptive, stat descriptive statistics. Uh, what's other, uh, the mean value, the range, the median value, they are all descriptive statistics. Okay, and then beyond statistical, uh, I mean, beyond descriptive statistics, we have inferential statistics. To make generalization about a statistical population based on sample characteristics of the population. Uh, looks complex, but in summary, you want to use, you want to estimate sample or say this, you want to use a sample of the population to estimate the population. Like I said, uh, you interview 200 people, but for some reason you cannot deal with the data set of 200 observations, it's just too big. You want to use randomly picked 50 observations to address that 200 interviews. Right. If that's the case, you want to use inferential statistical methods. Or let's just say this city has a population of 1 million. It's not even possible to interview all of them. You interview 200 of them. This is also, this 200 interviews, although it's not too many, it's still a subset of this one million people city. You can also use this 200 interviews to address this one million people, okay? Okay, so in inferential statistics or inferential methods, they are for generalization using samples, okay? You use samples to address a larger population. Okay, so specifically we have estimation. It is a uh, inferential uh, method, okay? One important type of statistical inference. Sample statistics are used to estimate a population characteristics. Uh, for example, um, um, for that one million city, right? So you interview 200 people for their commuting time. And uh, uh, from your uh, 200 interviews, you can tell that, say you calculated that the average uh, commuting time is 15 minutes. That's the mean value for your sample, for your experiment. But can you say that for the whole population, for 1 million people, the average time, the average commuting time, commuting time is still 15 minutes? You cannot say that. And actually, it's not possible to find out the accurate average value of commuting time for 1 million people using the sample you just did. But you can do this. Establish a specific confidence level. And based on that, you establish a specific confidence interval around that 15 minutes. Okay, and in the end, you can say at a specific confidence level, say 50, uh, 50 is just too low. At 95% confidence level, I can say that the average commuting time of 1 million people is within a specific range. That is just good enough in statistics. Okay, and this range, the center of this range is 15 minutes. That 15 minutes is from your experiment, is from your 200 interviews. So it's not useless. You can use this um, statistic of sample to estimate 
the statistic of population. Although it's a range, but it's good enough. Okay, and we also have hypothesis testing. It's another inferential um, statistical method. So it's an, another important type of, uh, of statistical inference. Uh, sample data are used to reach conclusions about population characteristics. Okay, for example, uh, the average commuting time is uh, 15 minutes according to your 200 interviews, right? Uh, 15 minutes. So let's just say, I assume that um, the, 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 the average commuting time for the whole population, 1 million people, is still 15 minutes. Or another value, you, you, you want to test, you want to test if, if your hypothesis is true if the actual average commuting time of the population is significantly different from 15 minutes or 20 minutes, right? And sometimes, uh, let's just uh, say, for now, ignore uh, the, the, the interview example. Let's just say we only have two data sets and we, we calculate the average value for data set A and calculate the, the average value for data set B. We want to test these two average values. They are statistically and, uh, in, uh, and significantly different from each other. You can, your hypothesis might be that they are equal to each other. That's your hypothesis. And you have to do hypothesis test to accept your hypothesis or deny it. That's called hypothesis testing. So in this semester, we're going to learn um, descriptive statistics. We're also going to learn infer inferential statistics. Okay, by the end of the semester, you will know how to do all of them. And um, they sound complex, but they can be very complex. But for this introductory, introductory level data, uh, they will not be very complex for this semester. So don't worry about that. Okay, okay, that's all I want to say for this specific lecture. I'll stop here and I'll see you in the next lecture. Thank you.